I'm Dominic Stevens. This week, the government has delivered its annual budget. Essentially, what's happened is the Treasury has issued a very optimistic set of economic forecasts. They're suggesting that economic growth will remain around 2.8% right through to the end of the decade. Now, with those optimistic economic forecasts, of course, the government has a forecast of very strong revenues. The way the government's reacted to that is by spending a little bit extra on the likes of education, health, welfare and justice, but mainly they're focused on debt reduction. The government's actually forecasting that the net debt to GDP ratio will tumble all the way to 20.8% by 2020. Now my first reaction is that I find the Treasury's forecasts unrealistic. I am more concerned that by the latter part of this decade, the wind down of the Canterbury rebuild, a slowdown in population growth, and a cooling of the current borrow and spend dynamic that's supporting the economy will all lead to slower economic growth. Actually, in 2019, the Treasury thinks that economic growth will be 2.9%. Westpac's forecast is 1.4%. Now, of course, if Westpac's forecast is correct, that means the government revenue will not be as strong as these budget forecasts imply, and therefore debt will not fall as rapidly as these budget forecasts imply. The other thing to bear in mind is this budget makes no allowance for tax cuts, but we actually know from recent comments from the Prime Minister that he favours tax cuts at some point. That's another reason that debt levels may not fall as much as these budget figures show. Now, in terms of the actual policies that the government's implemented today, they all seem pretty sensible to us. After all, you do need to, to spend more on education, health, welfare, etc., when the population is growing faster than you previously thought. Government's also decided to bring forward a lot of infrastructure spending, and we do agree that that infrastructure spending is necessary. However, we've got a bit of a quibble with the timing. They've brought it right forward into 2017, which is right at the time that the Canterbury rebuild is pushing up the price of this, this type of infrastructure work. We think better value for money could have been had by stretching out the infrastructure program over more years. Uh, other policies of note, the government has required or is going to require that polluting firms contribute more to, to the cost of their carbon emissions. That will flow through to consumers in the form of higher petrol and electricity prices. But it's a positive step as far as we're concerned and brings New Zealand closer to meeting its climate change obligations in the least cost manner. Tobacco excise is going up 10% a year for each of the next four years. In my world, actually, what that's going to do is add about 0.2 percentage points each year to inflation, thus reducing the need for the Reserve Bank to lower the OCR further. Actually, housing policy was conspicuous by its absence, but the government did hint that it's going to uh, issue a housing policy paper soon. It's hinted that perhaps it, it will acquire the ability to direct councils to re release more land where required, and it will also require councils to uh, account for or advertise the cost per section of any regulations that they introduce. Again, we think that those are positive steps and may uh, move, be one step towards alleviating New Zealand's housing supply concerns. Talk to you next week.